Okay, so I got a special video for all the diehard Daiwa Tatula fans, if there are such people out there, or anyone who's in the market for a nice compact tiny reel. Now ever since Daiwa came out with the Tatula almost 10 years ago to compete directly with Shimano's overwhelmingly popular Corrado. Now casting performance aside, they've always been playing catch up to the Corrado's when it came to the physical size of the reels as well as palming ergonomics. But that might change with this reel here. And of course I'm talking about the new Daiwa Tatula 80 and I got this reel from Japan Lure Shop and let's get into it. Now I looked on Tackle Warehouse to see when the 80s would be available and they had you know release dates or expected arrival dates just all over the place but these reels are available in Japan right now and they are much cheaper than the American market Tatula 80s and once again, I got this at Japan Lure Shop, so he gave me a free gift, a Amakatsu Chatterbait. Looks like a pretty good color. And here's the reel itself. Okay, we got a nice shiny black box, Tatula TW80XH. Let's open this thing up. Alright, we've got some paperwork. Instruction manual, I assume schematics in there as well. And we got the reel wrapped in the crispy, crinkly, clear plastic. And it's wrapped in another layer of plastic. Now I'm wondering if this is from Daiwa's factory or if it's from Japan Lure Shop. Check that out. This is the smallest Tatula ever and probably the smallest Daiwa in the world. Let you guys take a good look at this. You can see it is pretty much all black except for the plastic nut retainer, T wing line guide, and that fully exposed mag force adjustment dial, which has pretty much become a trademark for the Tatula amongst the Daiwa series. Nice matte paint job. It's kind of like a in between matte and gloss. Made in Thailand. Zero adjuster. Check out that spool. Got your Stealth Spider logo. And yeah, let me study this thing and I'm going to compare this reel to the other reel that it is based off of, which I'll explain to you guys later who don't know. And I'll be right back. Now, for those of you who are not familiar with JDM Daiwas, this new Tatula 80 might look like an entirely brand new reel. But for those of us who know about JDM Daiwas, we know that this is pretty much the same reel as the Daiwa Alphas. And there's only really a couple of minor differences that in my opinion you won't really feel in the real world. But the Daiwa Alphas is actually higher in terms of hierarchy in the Daiwa Japan lineup. So this Tatula 80 as well as the new Tatula 70 SV that's going to be coming out is based on a much more expensive reel. Now luckily for you guys I happen to have a Daiwa Alphas. I have the Alphas Air and 
The color is slightly different, but you can clearly see that these are the same frame and the same handle side plate. With the palm side plate being slightly different due to the exposed dial of the Tatula. Let me switch hands here. So yeah, that means this is a very, very small reel. Once again, the smallest Daiwa in the world currently. Now since the Tatula 80 is based on the Alphas, that means it's going to get an aluminum frame, going to get an aluminum handle side plate. I believe the palm side plate is graphite. It's going to have a Zion drag star that clicks. It's going to have the zero adjuster that is plastic as well as the basic plastic trim piece that covers the gearbox. This is keeping with the original Tatula formula of an aluminum frame and aluminum handle side plate. Now here in America, this is going to retail for $200, but I ordered mine from Japan Lure Shop and it was only $135 before shipping. And I think shipping was something like 20 bucks. So getting it from Japan, you can get it earlier and you can save quite a bit of money. And the only difference that I saw spec wise between the JDM Tatula 80 and the American version is that the American version is going to have a slightly longer handle at 90 millimeters while this JDM version has an 85 millimeter handle. Now with that being said, let's just go over some of the basic specifications and I'm going to use the box for that. Alright, so my particular reel is the 8.1 to 1 and it also comes in a 6 and a 7 gear ratio. It's supposed to weigh 6.3 ounces or 180 grams. We'll test that out in a second. It shows a max drag rating of 9.9 .9 pounds. And once again, that's the same for the JDM version that I have as well as the American version. And it's got seven plus one ball bearings. And you can see all the other marketing, hyper digigear, clutch, hyper arm housing, Mag Force Z, Team Wing Line Guide, Ultimate Tournament Drag. But on Daiwa USA's website, they do say this is a finesse reel that's why it's got slightly less ultimate drag pressure versus its other bait casters so with that being said let's compare the size of this new Tatula 80 to some other Daiwas as well as some competing reels just so I can show you how small it is okay so the first reel we're gonna compare the new Tatula 80 with is gonna be the Tatula CT and of course CT was supposed to stand for compact and Hopefully you guys can see that even though the CT was supposed to be compact. It was still a pretty big reel especially compared to this new 80 But it was significantly smaller than the original Tatula That it replaced Yeah, you can really see the size difference when I switch sides here and not surprisingly, when I line up the real feet, the Tatula 80 is much lower. So next up is going to be the Zillion 1000. And yeah, the Tatula 80 is definitely smaller. They're about the same length, but the Zillion is definitely wider. And the Zillion is definitely taller when you line up the real feet. Now here's a comparison when I switch sides up on the camera. And next up is going to be a comparison against the previous smallest Tatula. That is the Tatula 100 frame. And you can definitely see it is smaller. It's a little bit shorter. Definitely narrower, especially towards the front where the 100 flares out going towards the front tapers off at the back the 80 is pretty much even from front to back and let's switch sides again yeah the 80 is definitely smaller than the 100 and this 100 shares the same frame as the 2020 SV as well as the elite tattoos right, you can definitely see that the 80 is lower when you line up the real feet but yeah, this was the previous smallest Tatula, and while it was 
the most comfortable tattoo of the palm, it still fell short of being as comfortable as Shimano's Corrado's, which keep getting smaller and smaller. Now speaking of Corrado's, here's the Tattoo Lady versus the new MGL150. And they are pretty similar in size as far as length goes, but the Tattoola is definitely not as wide, or at least it doesn't appear that way. The Corrado looks wider to me, but then again, the Corrado does have a much bigger gearbox. Actually, they look about the same or similar once I switch sides, but when I line up the real feet, they're pretty much even as far as height goes. But you'll see here that the Corrado looks to have a bigger, I guess, side plate. Now next up is the reel that I think Daiwa was aiming for as far as size goes. That is the Corrado MGL70. And Honestly, the Corrado looks smaller from this angle, but it could be just a trick of the much narrower top plate. Kind of got to look at underneath the top plate. We're going to switch up sides here. Let me know what you guys think. Which reel is smaller? Now, when I flip them off to the side view here, it looks to me... I can line up the reels, see these reels are so dark that the Corrado might sit just a hair lower. But I will tell you this, I mounted these two reels a few minutes ago on the same rod and they are very close in palm and comfort. Both of these are probably, both of these frames are probably in the top three as far as palm and comfort in my opinion. And this is excluding, you know, any kind of AliExpress Chinese reels. But yeah, this is the reel that I think Daiwa was targeting when it comes to size with this new Tattoola 80. Alright, so the next reel we're going to compare the Tattoola 80 with is not a Daiwa or Shimano. It's actually the new Okuma Hakai. It's a reel that boasts very impressive specs for not a whole lot of money. And the Hakai is slightly bigger. I'll switch sides here just a little bit bigger but very similar in profile and the Hakai is also super comfortable to palm but this is an unlikely competitor for the Tattoo 80 if you are talking about price but don't be surprised if you see this real battling the 80 out on the casting field Okay, one more reel we're going to compare the size of the Tattoola with, and that's the reel that I feel has the most in common with the Tattoola 80, and that is the long discontinued Shimano Corrado 50. And they're very similar. Looks like the Corrado is slightly wider in the middle. They're pretty similar in height. Want to switch sides. Looks like the Corrado is definitely wider right around here. It tapers off towards the front. But as soon as I saw the specs for the Tattoola 80, I immediately thought Corrado 50. And that's because both of these are supposed to be finesse reels with smaller spools, but they both have deep line capacity, as you can see. And who knows, maybe if there's enough interest, I'll throw in this old Corrado 50 in a cast battle versus the Tattoo 80 as well as some other reels. So leave it in the comments if you want to see that. Now before we get to the weights on this reel, let's talk about the elephant in the room. And that is the fact that Daiwa says this new Tattoo 80 is a finesse reel, but they already have a finesse Tattoo in the 2020 Tattoo SV. In fact, they're actually still selling the original Tattoola SV, but that's a whole nother story. Now these two reels are very similar in the fact that they have 32mm spools, 
but according to the specs I see on Tackle Warehouse, they're supposed to have the same line capacity. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take all this 10 pound mono off the 2020 SV and spool it onto the 80 and see how they compare line capacity wise. Okay, so there we go. And it looks like to me that the spool is overfilled on the 80. So the SV 2020 version holds a little bit more line than the 80, but it is very similar. So I guess the question I'm wondering is that we already have a Tatula with a 32 millimeter finesse spool in this 2020 SV. So why are they coming out with the 80 that also has a 32 millimeter spool and similar line capacity. And in fact, the Tatula 70 SV is gonna have an even smaller spool, I think at 30 millimeters and hold even less line. Now in my mind, they really wanted a really small, comfortable, compact reel to compete against the Corrados. Because while this SV is pretty small, it's still not as small as competing Shimano Corrados. So who knows if Dai was gonna keep this in the lineup or if they're gonna discontinue it. But if you go on Taco Warehouse, you'll see a total of 12 Tatulas for sale right now at one time. Really the only thing missing is a Tatula Air BFS reel, which I wouldn't be surprised if we see one of those come out pretty soon using this platform. So let's get to the weights, because I'm really interested to see how heavy or how light this spool is. Now before we get a weight on the Tatula 80, as well as some competing reels, I just want to show you guys something that pretty much confirmed my feelings about the Tatula 80 being so similar to the Crotto 50. And that is that I spooled the line straight from the Tatula 80 to the Crotto 50, and they pretty much have the same line capacity. Alright, let's get some weights. Now the first reel we're going to weigh is going to be the 2020 SV. coming in at 6.62 ounces. Now next up is going to be the Okuma Hakai. And in case you didn't know, the Hakai, even though it's much cheaper than these other reels, the frame's actually made of magnesium. So it comes as no surprise that it is lighter at 5.93 ounces, just under the magical 6 ounce mark. All right, so next up is gonna be the Corrado 70 MGL. Coming in at 6.93 ounces. So even though it's pretty small, the fact that they included the micromodule gears, which I believe are brass, and they gave it the much longer, beefier handle, this Corrado 70 MGL weighs more than it looks. Okay, so the last reel we're gonna weigh before we get to the Tatula, going to be the new MGL 150 and it comes in at 6.66 ounces just like when I unboxed it okay so at long last we get to the Tatula 80 and once again this is the JDM model which has a shorter handle they say it's supposed to weigh 6.3 ounces comes in at 6.45 which is actually very respectable considering how much aluminum is on this reel. Remember, the frame and the handle side plate is aluminum. And I'm pretty sure the gears are aluminum as well. But the American models may be just a hair heavier because of the longer handle. Now I do believe I read somewhere that they were supposed to come in at 6 ounces even, but I could be mistaken. But now it's time to get to the weight of this spool. Now, since Daiwa designates this Tatula 80 as a finesse reel, spool weight is going to be very important because lighter spools handle light baits a lot easier than heavier spools. So to get to the spool on the Tatula 80, we come to one of the main differences between 
this reel and the alphas and that's the fact that you have to unscrew this dial to get to the spool and here are the brakes this is the magforce z so right here we have the i guess magnet hub you got these two rings here that are unsurprisingly made of plastic because this is one of Daiwa's lower end models. In the higher end models, these two rings are generally made of metal, but the magnets are positioned inside these two rings. Now let's take the spool out and take a good look at it. Now, holding it in hand, it actually feels pretty heavy. It feels heavy and solid. Now it's got a long spool shaft made of steel, like Shimano, and this long spool shaft is the reason why the Tatulas don't feature the hyper double support, which is a double bearing supported pinion. Because obviously this long spool shaft is also supporting the pinion. But this is going to give me an opportunity to explain the MagForce Z dynamic brake system to you guys who don't know how it works. And I'm also going to show you the difference between MagForce Z and the air brake of the SV spools. All right, so here's the spool of the Tattoo SV 2020 version. I'm gonna lay that down. But MacForce Z is a dynamic magnetic system, meaning the distance between the spool and the magnets change during the cast. So at the very beginning of the cast, when the spool is spinning its farthest, centrifugal force pushes out this rotor like so. So it pops out depending on how fast the spool is spinning and it slots right into this channel just like so and of course when the rotor is popped out at its maximum position more metal is interacting with the magnets giving you stronger braking force but the cool thing about this system is that once the spool starts to slow down this rotor will slowly go back into its normal position theoretically giving you longer casts on the tail end versus static magnetic systems. Now the downside to this design is that it does add weight to the spool. Now the difference between MagForce Z versus the air brake of the SV spools, at least the ones without the boost feature, is this. The air brake has a weaker spring for one thing, but it also twists out, like so. Now with MagForce Z, it doesn't twist. It can only come out if the spool is spinning fast enough. Now with the SV system, this rotor pops out immediately and it stays out pretty much during the entire length of the cast. And in fact, I'm going to show you guys in a future video that these old style SV spools without the boost feature on its rotor are functionally static magnetic systems. But that's going to be in another video. And also, SV spools tend to have bigger inductors or rotors. But it's going to give us a good chance to compare the spools of these two finesse tattoolas. Now they're both supposed to be 32 millimeters in diameter, but unless my eyes are playing tricks on me, looks like the SV spool is a tad bit taller, but it's definitely wider. I think this is, I think, 24 or 23 millimeters wide, while I think the 80 is only 21 millimeters wide. But hopefully you can see the 80 spool is slightly deeper. But as we saw, the line capacity is just a little bit shy of the SV. But enough rambling about the brake system. Let's get a weight on these spools. Okay, so we're gonna weigh the 80 spool last but the weight on the SV is going to be 13.148 so pretty much 13.15 grams so pretty light even by today's standards even though spools are getting lighter and lighter every year and next up is going to be the flight spool of the Okuma Hakai and it's got a bearing but we're looking at an ultralight 9.58 grams, pretty much 9.6 grams with this bearing. All right, so next up is going to be the spool of the Corrado 
MGL70. And this spool weighs in at 12.7 grams. But now that I have both of these spools in my hand, they actually feel like they weigh pretty similar. So maybe the Tattoola 80 spool is going to be lighter than I think it's going to be. All right, and here's the spool of the Crotto MGL 150. 12.87, so pretty much 12.9 grams. And then last but not least, just for fun, here's the spool of the discontinued Corrado 50E. And we're looking at 11.35 grams. So still much lighter than the current Corrado 70 and 150 MGL. That was one of the reasons why the 50E series reels are pretty much loved universally by all Shimano fans, and you rarely see them for sale on eBay. Okay, moment of truth. Tattoo 80 spool. Whoa, 15.05 grams. Let's weigh that again. 15.05 grams. So that is much heavier than I thought it would be. I thought it'd be somewhere in the 13 to 14 gram range. And like I said, when I pick up the competing Corrado spool, they don't feel that much different. Well, actually, in fact, yeah, I could definitely feel the Tatula spool is a little bit heavier, but 15 grams for a finesse spool is pretty disappointing. That's almost two grams heavier than the Tatula SV spool. So that's a very, very interesting move by Daiwa to give this 80 such a heavy spool, especially considering it's supposed to be for finesse. Okay, so let's wrap this video up by asking this question. What reel is Daiwa exactly trying to compete with with this new Tatula 80? Now it's priced at $199, and that is the exact same price of its own Tatula Stablemate, the 2020 SV, as well as the older 2017 SV, which is still for sale. Now, both of the current Tatula SVs have significantly lighter spools than the Tatula 80. But once again, Daiwa designates this Tattoo 80 as a finesse Tattoo. So once again, I don't know if they're going to be discontinuing this reel as well as the original Tattoo SV and just sell the 70 SV model. That remains to be seen. Now size wise, the Tattoo 80 competes with the Corrado MGL 70. They palm very similar, but the MGL 70 has a much lighter spool and it also costs $40 more. So due to the price difference between the two, I don't think that the Corrado MGL 70 is the target. I think Daiwa is targeting this reel with the Tatula 70 SV, which I believe is selling for like $229. Now the only other logical conclusion is that this new Tatula 80 is trying to compete with the very hot selling Corrado MGL 150. They both cost $199. They both weigh roughly the same. And right here is the line that I took straight off the 80 and spooled onto the Corrado. And you can see they have pretty much the same line capacity. But as we saw, the MGL 150 has a much lighter spool, plus the brakes are centrifugal. So at least in my experience, it should dominate this Tatula 80 when it comes to casting. Now the 80 does palm a little bit better, but the 150 so far feels smoother to turn the handle because of the micro module gears. But we're not going to assume that the 150 is just going to dominate the 80 in casting. We're going to go out into the casting field and find out for ourselves. And in fact, I think I'm going to include the 2020 Tattoo SV and possibly even the old discontinued Corrado 50. Because I've actually never taken one of these reels out and did measure casting before. So if you guys want to see me include this Corrado 50 in the cast battle, give me a thumbs up and leave a comment. And also let me know what you think of this Tattoo 80. It's definitely got the size of a finesse reel, but it definitely 
does not have the spool weight of a finesse reel. But with the addition of the 80 and the 70, we're going to have a total of 12 tattoos for sale at the same time. So for those of you guys who prefer the Daiwa style of magnetic braking and you can't afford their more expensive models like the Zillion or the Steez, with 12 Tattoola models to choose from, there's surely a model that's going to be perfect for you. Alright guys, thanks a lot.